Awesome. Start thinking about your favorite ocean movies. Catalina's Surf's Up reference got me thinking. Mm -hmm. In honor of Big Zeke, Big Z, <laughs> Topanga. Classic movie. What's your favorite ocean movie? Oh, that looks excellent. It's a beautiful rock. Go ahead and throw it in the chat if you're online while we watch this sample get dropped in the box. Yeah, looking Rocks good. Is that going into starboard bio? Yep, I think you can squeeze it into box D. Uh, I think so. Okay, what, uh, which one do we have um, open? Box D. D? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you can also put in an F2. F is empty. Beautiful. Nice work, Zach. Thank you. What a layup. It was like Dr. J right there. Yeah. Oh, we're getting some good ones coming in online. Ocean themed movies. A Perfect Storm. Thank you, Melanie from Iowa. A Shark Tale. Finding Nemo. They're stealing all our good ones. That is sample 076, correct? That is correct. Excellent. Team in the control van, anyone else have a favorite ocean themed movie? I like Titanic. Aquatic. Titanic. It's <laughs> no. oh, a good way one. Of the water. I mean Titanic is just I like the the newer Avatar that came out. Oh, it was pretty Way cool. of Water, that was beautiful. It's like I couldn't wow. imagine if that came out as, when I was a child. I know. Like, I just the seen graphics. That one yet. It's pretty. Im it's pretty impressive. Yeah. So I have two. Oh. The Abyss. <laughs> yes. Sure. yes. And uh, Life Aquatic because it's just. Life so Aquatic, fun. of course. <laughs> Life Aquatic oh, is excellent. Oh, classic films. 
Anyone seen the cult classic North Shore, 1980s, maybe early 90s no. North Shore? Nobody ever listens to Turtle. <laughs> oh, you guys got to watch it. Oh, Rick Kane, Arizona surf star, wave pool surf star, moves to the North Shore. I wonder if that's in the North ship's Shore. library. <laughs> it might be in the ship's library. Oh, if it is, we should put it on because uh, everyone should meet Turtle and uh, Chandler mm -hmm. and Dahui. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Classic, classic, uh, Ooh, classic surf film. It's not exactly an ocean movie, but um, part of it takes place involving the ocean, uh, the core. Oh, the core. Oh, An absolutely yeah. terrible geology yes. movie. Oh yeah. my gosh, that was so funny. All-star cast. The science is so bogus. It's so bad, it's so good. <laughs> and it's just hilarious, it, oh. unintentionally hilarious. And I love that movie so much. It's so bad, it's good. I That's when they it. get to the core and there's like giant crystals everywhere. Oh yeah, the giant geodes. Yeah, oh my gosh. So funny. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't quite work that way in there. <laughs> also, there's no tectonic plate boundary near Hawaii. Hawaii yeah. is intraplate. <laughs> it is very much smack in the middle of the uh, Pacific Plate. Pacific Plate, yeah. yeah. Oh, we've got The Hunt for Red October. Good Ooh. war movie coming oh, in yeah. from Cheryl. That's Mahalo a good Cheryl. One. And uh, we got, oh, I like this one, the WSL in Tahiti. We were, uh, we were, Mahina and I were talking about Topu and uh, yeah. the incredible wave watching uh, the surf contest there on one of the gnarliest waves on the planet is always a treat. Mm -hmm. And uh, watching the Tahitian shine, the best surfers in the world surf there. Oh, wow. point break, point break. Mm. Oh my gosh, 20 footers at the point. <laughs> Keanu Reeves, Patrick Swayze, the original point break. If you haven't seen that one. They were actually picture. talking about remaking point break. Uh, they did, they did remake it. Again? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, again. Uh, another <laughs> remake, another point break? a third version? Yeah. All right, this is getting Hollywood's ridiculous. Hollywood's running out of ideas. Yeah. Yeah. We got Whale Riders, beautiful oh, film. Oh, Whale Riders, that film. was before its time. Yeah, yeah. Like, that was that's amazing. That's an amazing film. That was beautifully done. Amazing. Okay, this is, oh, Jaws. Oh, Jaws. <laughs> Jaws. Oh, many of us did grow up on Jaws. Yeah. I, you know, I, uh, I wish we didn't terrify everybody of sharks, but uh, it was a captivating film, especially for its time. Yeah, and apparently uh, they unintentionally made it more compelling by uh, the fact that the, the shark, the mechanical shark they used, uh, it was really hard to get it to work. <laughs> so you didn't actually see the shark all that much, and uh, that had the unintended effect of uh, incre like heightening the suspense of the movie. Oh, that's true. Wow. Interesting fact. I remember being at Universal Studios and on the ride, and <laughs> it came up right, the mechanical shark came up right by your feet yeah. while you're on board, and just riding through. It's like, oh my gosh, so Jaws. Funny yeah. fact I learned somewhere. from someone about the mechanics. So the same person, I think the same person who made uh, Bruce, the, the robotic Shark. Oh, yeah. oh. He uh, he made the actual T Rex for Jurassic Park. Oh, no. oh, but wow. the thing with the T Rex one is that they always had problems with it that it would <laughs> it would randomly start lashing around and people oh, had to no. actually stand out of the way for it to finish doing what it's doing because it, it like literally just the head would mind just start swinging. Own. Yeah, oh, like no. the head would start swinging and the jaws start opening up. Frankly, like was alive. <laughs> We've oh, created a monster. <laughs> I have to give a shout out. I love all the surf movies. So Endless Summer, classic Bruce, Bruce Brown. Everyone's seen the poster, but if you haven't seen the film, wow, what a trip those guys got to go on around the world. Is yeah, that's what I'm going for right now. Have you guys seen Sahara oh. with Matthew McConaughey? Hello. No. Tina, Tina Four. What is it? It's like Sahara. Sahara. With oh. Matthew McConaughey. I've heard um, of it. I love Matt McConaughey. Come I on. do too. Is this another one of those predatory Tina Fours, you think? I think so. It doesn't have that same coloration, or at least not as much. Yeah. Thank you. We saw one of these um, earlier, but this is very different from some of the some of the. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah the one that Sebastian helped us with. We need yeah. Sebastian. Are you in the Sebastian lounge? Sebastian. The Sebastian. Hmm? What went on? What? There's some big corals or sponge skeleton or something there. Oh, interesting. Quite large.
One of our viewers makes a good point. Point Break was great, but it's not really an educational film. Come on. <laughs> Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze disagrees. <laughs> well, neither is the core. <laughs> <laughs> I miss education. We were talking about that the other day. It does have a pretty good cast, though. Hey, that's what Hollywood loves. Get the big names in. Yeah, big names, <laughs> big money. Not so much big facts. <laughs> yeah, What's alternative the facts. Volcano film that's got Pierce Brosnan in it. Ooh, Pierce. Oh, Pierce. Volcano's Volcano's is it called pretty Volcano good. Or is that what it's called, or is it called Dante's? Uh, there's Dante's one called Peak. Volcano Dante's and one Peak. called Dante's Peak. Yeah, that was that big. <laughs> They're both pretty good. I don't know if Pierce wants this get you know out there, but I remember it. He, Used to disguise himself and ride his bike into Hanalei Town no on the way. North Shore of Kauai. Yeah, he'd try to catch Uncle Pierce. Nice. You know, we haven't seen. Yeah, we oh, that sponge. Yeah, that was a yeah. different sponge. We might come up with another one, and we. Oh, yeah. do you want yeah. me to go look at it? I mean, we got a little bit. Yeah, we, if you let's go take a quick look at it. It'd be great to take a look at that. Did anybody watch that movie that came out like a year ago that or right so there? called? Uh, oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, this Perfect. one right here. Yeah, has anybody seen Moonfall? No. Moonfall. That one's pretty oh, wild. Heard about that. I don't know. My physics teacher would always make us watch Sixth Sense. Oh, <laughs> and yeah, Sixth Sense. Speaking of like educational, I'm like, how we were always just like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Sixth Sense. <laughs> what, Mr. Lyons? It's Interesting. Physics. It's physics. It's physics. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my answer to everything. With the people, uh, well, that makes no sense. Well, it's physics. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Uh, uh, for educational videos, we watched uh, for our safety briefing for our first deep dive ever. Uh, when I was getting my oh, certification, um, they made us watch 70 meters down. Oh. And they're like, "Hey, this is our safety briefing for tomorrow's deep dive, so pay attention." Yikes. I'm like, oh, "Okay, <laughs> cool, thanks." It's oh. funny. Oh, we got to vote for the deep. Anything with Nick Nolte? Yeah, absolutely. Love Nick oh, Nolte. That's beautiful. Nick, if you're listening, big fan. Yeah, that is, a, that is a beautiful sponge there with some um, associates as well. There's a, looks like a shrimp and a, and an ophuroid. You can just see some of the, mm -hmm. the arms of the brutal star. There, there, possibly another one there. Yeah, so this is looking one like hanging a... Hanging out in the crevice there. Yeah, this is looking like a, a ferret sponge. Very beautiful. We've got viewers noticing that they need to make a movie about deep sea coral life, coral and sponge Yay. life. I think Papa Hanomokuakea Deep deserves a deserves a film. You should narrate that. Yeah. Yes, that, that would be awesome. That would be yes, that would be a lot of fun. We could be the characters, right? There could be oh like gosh. we could each be a different coral or what would I be? I'd probably be a holothurian. I call uh, being a worm. A worm? <laughs> Kukui the worm? I'll be the tumbling snail and run away. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> the tumbling snail voice. You'd be the perfect voice for the tumbling I'm snail. I'm a little media shy. Yeah. Hey, it could be a beautiful animated film. I just want to be a mushroom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mushroom film. Yeah. Love it. That would be great. Okay, Excellent. sounds Thank like we got our next question is who, which, which deep sea organism are you going to be in the film that we're about to make? Animated <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> film? Voiceovers, we got yeah. this, you guys. Oh my god, look at that cute shrimp. Oh, oh they're like yeah. in and out. I don't know if that's <laughs> bubbles or if that's. Excellent. Well, thank you for that zoom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank you. All right, let's work our way up toward waypoint six. All right, we've got about 25 minutes left in our watch because somehow that has flown by once again. Seeing lots of rocks. Not quite as many corals as we saw in the earlier dives, but uh, oh, yeah. we're still uh, getting a, a pretty good survey of uh, uh, bamboo species around here. We've seen some a lot of large sponges. We, yeah, we've seen a lot of uh, chrysogorgias and metallogorgias, um, and uh, some of these sponges, um, and we're seeing more of the round uh, chrysogorgias. Yeah, and a notable notable lack of uh, hemichorallium. Well, we're at a, you know, we are at a very different depth than we were seeing those. Yeah, um, those tend to occur more shallow, earlier right? In the cruise, um, and I think we're actually been. 
we might be even deeper than we saw the Paragorgids as well yesterday in the last few days. I'm not, I can't remember exactly what depth we saw them yesterday, but. Uh, I think most of our, our yeah. three dives since the shipwrecks have been roughly the similar depth profiles, about 2,500 meters to 1,000 meters deep. Yeah, um, yeah, I just can't remember where we where started along seeing the tracks, what taxa, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah absolutely. Yeah, this is uh, one of a few smaller, uh, uh, deeper seamounts. So, uh, yeah, right now we're uh, just over 1,650 meters deep. And uh, the summit on this one happens uh, about 1,550 meters, 1,550. Oh, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're only about 100 meters below the summit at this point. Wow. But, uh, still have a couple of waypoints left in the dive. And, uh, plenty to look at. Yeah, it's not quite as steep of a slope as we had been previously working on, um, not quite of those same ridge features, so yeah. it'll take a while to get to the summit depth. Well, Darth Vader would say, I find your lack of ridge features disturbing. <laughs> 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 yeah, th they're, they're really not any uh, uh, very clearly defined ridges on the seamount. It's, uh, it's uh, much more conical, uh, much more uniform than oh. uh, our, uh, our past uh, geology and bio bi bi biology dives uh, on this cruise. Does and that kinda, general shape like tell you anything about the geology? Or? Mm, not really. Um, I mean, probably fewer flank collapses, but um, I don't know. They, um, it's, it's a pretty common uh, uh, seamount form. Uh, Sebastian was calling it generic last uh. night. But yeah, uh, yeah, you can get you can get a few a few different shapes. Oh, so star. this is a common one, very oh, right. conical. But yeah, I think I think we are seeing a little bit uh, tighter association on yeah, this one between uh, uh, these these little bumps or hummocks on the uh, flanks of the seamount and occurrence of hyaloclastites. So uh, I think we are looking at a uh, seamount that has uh, seen. Um, some of the major stages of uh, uh, volcanism that we would expect at an intraplate seamount, and uh, at least made it through the, uh, the post shield stage, would be uh, my tentative field interpretation for uh, part of its history. So there's, a li there, there's some parts of the, you know, the, the morphology that we're seeing that uh, can inform us potentially a little bit about um, uh, this uh, this volcano's life cycle, but. Um, yeah, we're, we're still only kind of getting little little bits and pieces, little hints to that. You know, you also see that hummocky uh, uh, set of uh, like oh, late post-shield stage that. cones on uh, some of uh, the volcanoes comprising uh, Rapa Nui, which uh, some of you may know as Easter Island. It's got, uh, uh, that, that island is made up of three volcanoes, and uh, several of them have uh, a number of these uh, uh, parasitic cones and on Easter Island, uh, similar with the uh, number of the Louisville hotspot seamounts, uh, we call that late stage of volcanism uh, the rift that. stage. Rift stage. So a little bit different than uh, the Hawaiian uh, volcanic life cycle terminology. Love our ohana, our friends down in Rapa Nui. Some consider. Amber, can I go zoom? Yeah, look at the worm. Yeah. Hey, kukui. Yay. Kukui, I heard you. Oh, oh it could so be a Tomopterus. Cool. Yeah. Although, don't take me on that. It could just be a worm that swims. But there is a specific so cool. type of pelagic worm oh, so interesting. that is called the Tomopterus, which are legs are fascinating. Yeah. Okay, I think those might be my favorite. Look at that. Creepy. <laughs> it's got oh. dance moves, too. Look, yeah. Look at them go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a salsa worm. Pretty. Salsa worm. Yeah. I um, think we can play Girl from Ipanema to the Ocean. Yeah, I, am, I, I am going to be singing Girl from Ipanema for the rest of the day. Sorry, <laughs> sure yeah. about How many different versions can we fit into the rest of the day? Oh my gosh, yeah, <laughs> I want to hear them all. I only think I know the original all and the Sinatra. Segmented worm. You know what's up? Uh, we're going kind of like this way. Yeah. Tall and tan and young and lovely. You know, I wish I had brought an instrument on board, but just, I don't know, trombones and ships don't seem to mix very well. <laughs> yeah. And I can't really play anything else, so. Come on. You could play our wake-up call every morning. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, I think that's a good way to end up being dropped off at Midway with uh, No Way Back. <laughs> I mean, I, I, no one's I, best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I could do a decent imitation of the ship's horn. Mm. 
Not for quite as long, though. My lungs aren't that big. So I was working on a ship one time with a... I don't know, I was working with this crew, and there was one guy, he would not wake up for anything. Oh, no. And so he would have to set himself 12 alarms. Like, oh. did you not? And th so you get up in the morning, and all of a sudden, or you're trying to sleep, and he gets up, you know, crack of dawn, like, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, and, oh, you know, we're, we're, he was just like, you, you would hear his alarm all day, <laughs> all in the no. morning, and everyone was just like, shut up! <laughs> The walls can be thin on ships. Oh. Yeah, it's good uh, Good training and being a good roommate. Some of us uh, have forgotten. <laughs> By some of us, I mean me. So it's nice to be reminded to get to sh have our shipmate Hans as a roommate. Nice. And uh, got to make sure to take care of that space. Yeah, shared space. <laughs> yeah. How many people have set alarms for cookie time? <laughs> Mahina guaranteed. <laughs> and you know, I, my room is quite close to the mess room, but sometimes if I peek out and I'll look, other times I'll just sleep through my alarm and be like, okay, it's okay. It's sometimes okay. you could smell cookies baking while we're oh, hanging out on yeah. the social that deck. Is, yeah. Oh, that's the, the scent real signal. of fresh baked cookies just wafts through the, uh, the social deck, the lanai. Mm -hmm. oh. It is about that time where the conversation is exclusively <laughs> oh, about food. No. And yeah, lunch. we are into the lunch hour. Yeah. Not started I'm 12 actually minutes surprised ago. that we uh, haven't, lasted this long. Yeah, <laughs> we haven't started this conversation earlier. I think it took us long enough to wake up this morning because oh. <laughs> at least a couple of us on this watch. Uh, uh, yeah, it wasn't the easiest time getting getting moving this morning. I've got my mind on this new feature length animated film we're about to yeah. star in. And, uh, <laughs> Trying to figure out oh, who no, I can talk to. We haven't to. zoomed in on this, these crinoids on this much, actually. If we could do that, that'd be great. Yeah, it's giving that Walteria some serious flair there. Oh, yeah, those crinoids are really pretty. Oh, they are. They always remind me of fireworks. They do. The, the kind that don't scare your pets. friend in the comments saying, I just got a new aquarium and it's easy to care for. It's the Megalab cam live stream. Megalab oh. uh, has a great live stream camera. Right. Shout out to the Megalab, yeah. the whole crew there. Yeah, Kukui, oh, Kukui yeah. knows that Ohana well. Get a zoom uh, number. Uh, yeah. yeah, so does uh, Jacob, one of our other yeah. crewmates. That's right. Yeah. They're doing great work across Hawaii and around the world, mapping coral reef ecosystems and uh, collecting all kinds of amazing data on, on the impact that we have island living has on our near shore ocean ecosystem and mm -hmm. yeah. there's uh, actually oh there's sorry actually what was a couple that? of crinoids no, oh, no go for it no. Cool, oh, cool. Uh, there's um speaking of the camera there's another person from the mega lab coming on board zach taylor who's doing an amazing project exactly. um using using the camera oh uh, excellent footage from that so so stay tuned. Every expedition is fantastic on the Nautilus. There's so much to learn, amazing personalities, uh, so much knowledge, so much, uh, so much love for the ocean and love for our community. So absolutely. Yeah. Dan, I was also wanting to ask you, um, the video you showed us earlier, the animated one, uh, Mano, oh, where yeah. can we find that or view that? One of my I favorite wanted to send ocean that over films. to some of our students back, um, back at home. I love it. I love it. We are, um, so the filmmaker, Brittany Biggs, a uh, professor formerly at, at UH, Creative Media Lab, and uh, the Nakachi, Ohana Nakachi on Moku Okeave, worked together to make a film called Mano, mm -hmm. a short 10 minute animated film uh, that takes you through millions of years of Hawaiian island history and geology um, and uh, through the eyes of a, a beautiful tiger shark, a mano. And um, that you can check that mano shark film um, dot com and you can look them up on social media. The film's not available online yet. Um, you can watch the trailer, um, but across uh, the islands, if you're interested in showing it in Hawaii, uh, you can uh, Get in touch with uh, the crew here at OET. Knows how to put you in touch with me and Purple Maya. You can look up purplemaya.org um, uh, if you want to know more. And we're helping arrange screenings along with Brittany and the Nakachi yeah. Ohana so that more of our Kiki can see this beautiful film. Oh my gosh, mahalo for all the work you guys are doing. That was just incredible. Yeah, it speechless. Really was. Yeah, it was beautiful. It's incredibly moving. Yeah. It's beautiful. Awesome. Mm -hmm. We're ready to move on. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. Beautiful Thank footage. You. Yes. Yeah. He never put it in. Yeah. <laughs> like, kind of reminds me of some of those traditional like, plumes yeah, you'll see on like, uh, you know, like a uh, uh, warrior dress. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah, beautiful. We have a friend watching from home says, really happy to hear that the Lipanema reminded people in the van of the girl <laughs> from Ipanema. It's the exact thing that they said when they first heard the name Lipanema. Of course, we're dating ourselves with that song, as we pointed out early. The Perhaps. younger ones in the van, not uh, quite familiar with our uh, 1960s Grammy winning titles. I know the chorus. Yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> It's just one of those songs that's kind of timeless. Yeah, it is. Oh, like Samba it. just belongs next to the next to the ocean. Mm -hmm. It's uh, bossa nova, samba, jazz. Very kind of chill, beachy feel to it. Oceanic in nature. Oh, yeah, that's a whole other thing. Your our favorite ocean themed or ocean connected songs and music. Girl from Ipanema could definitely be one. Hey, that was so beautiful listening to that uh, uh, beautiful Maori love mm. song to Tongaro to Kanaloa. Yeah, incredible. Very different kind of music, but uh, there's a uh, European uh, prog metal supergroup called The Ocean, and uh, they put out a few albums, and they're sort of making musical interpretations of uh, geologic time. Oh, <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah. Wow. What did oh. you say they were called? The ocean. Just the, the ocean. ocean. And it's alternative or rock? Uh, progressive metal. Progressive metal. So progressive pr pretty metal. heavy. Nice. And, uh, yeah, they, they do uh, versions with vocals and sometimes some uh, instrumental versions. And Yeah, they've got a... I, I, I'm actually a big fan. Uh, Somehow, uh, this, this ended up uh, being coincidental with the, the era of time that I work on a lot. Uh, their uh, Jurassic Cretaceous track is pretty cool. Do they slow their metal voices down and just kind of uh, do that deep growl yelling? And, uh, it, and it is a little bit growly, yeah. yeah I love that. <laughs> oh, not love not that. quite as melodic vocals. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got uh, some Jimmy Buffett lovers uh, passed oh, away there you go. just a couple oh, weeks yeah. ago. Poor Jimmy Buffett. Oh. Miss Jimmy already. Pirate looks at 40. I've been singing that song to myself mm -hmm. since since I found out that Jimmy passed. So rest in aloha, Uncle Jimmy. Mm -hmm. You're a legend. Oh, Albatross by Fleetwood Mac. It's a good call too. Oh, the yeah. internet's coming in with some good recommendations. Got to add them to my playlist. Mahalo. Mm, sea cucumber. Oh, good spot. I can see its guts. Nice. I discovered recently, I was like really excited. There's a, a very famous Colombian singer named Joe Arroyo from the Caribbean coast, and he has a song called Catalina del Mar. Ooh, and, I, and it was there like, we go. Yeah, it was literally, yeah, Yay. it was just about music to see, and I was like, oh my gosh. Catalina, yeah, um, the name Catalina, yeah, is, uh, translates to pure, or the meaning. Makes sense. Catalina del Mar. I love it. Another place we have to go, Cartagena, Barranquilla. Mm. Still have to dance our salsa from Cali. Not done that yet. So we're at about 16, 50 meters depth. Uh, yep. Just over 10% oxygen saturation. Uh, just raw data coming in from uh, Herx sensor array. Quite yeah. the oxygen minimum here. We are not seeing a lot that's I alive. Th well, I think you'd say a lot low oxygen, oxygen minimum zones. That's like the the lowest. Um, point yeah, true. We don't know area. if it's the minimum so, here. Yeah. It, um, uh, but it it you know yeah we have seen a decrease in oxygen, which is mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Um, got a temperature of two point three degrees. Uh, salinity of thirty four point six psu. Yeah, and it's dropping a little bit slightly as we're going up. Although, uh, yeah, <laughs> the uh, CTV on Herc is uh, giving us data in practical salinity units. So, unit is a unit around these parts. Unit! <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, so, we've had some, yeah. 
Just really quickly, um, it's a it's a different topic, but it's a super interesting observation. As some of you have been fo follow the Nautilus all the time, all of our expeditions, all of our dives. Um, but if you've been following along with the Ala Omoana Kaiuli expedition um, in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument, you'll know that we also dove on three shipwrecks, um, aircraft carriers from the Battle of Midway uh, just a week ago. And one of our viewers says, if you rewatch the review of the Yorktown at 1615, and you look in the hangar where some people thought maybe they saw the wing of a plane, from what I understand, we, we, don't, we didn't have any consensus that we saw a plane um, on any of the carriers that we saw. But uh, according to this viewer, it appears to be the underside of the folded starboard wing of a Douglas TBD-1 Devastator. And it uh, says wow. the emblem is visible in the back. I'm going to make sure we pass that on to Mike and, and yeah. Hans and the crew just to see they can go back and double check. But uh, we love all the viewers contribute so much. You know, you're exploring with us, deep sea travelers with us, falling in love with Papa Hanau Mukuakea even more deeply with us. So we're so glad, uh, we're so glad that you're here and making your contributions, your questions, whether it's uh, your favorite movies, songs, insights into what we're seeing here in the ocean, species identification. Um, yeah, thank you for that spot. It's awesome. We can definitely uh, get some folks following up on that. Because yeah, we we don't catch everything while we're in the control room or uh, watching down in the lounge because it's just there, there's so much to look at. Absolutely. A lot a lot of stuff that we're uh, keeping track of here. So yeah, we we don't see everything, and that's where uh, more eyes really help us. And I'll, we'll probably all be signing off within about five minutes, but just wanna make sure these get uh, shouted out. Jimmy's new song, Bubbles Up, um, comes with high recommendations from Cat, Fins Up and Aloha Cat, Mahalo Cat. I uh, haven't heard Bubbles Up. I'm gonna go back and uh, and check it out. And and if anyone wants to answer the question, if, do our families or our partners or our friends, the people we're connected to back home, do they love the ocean just like we do? I don't know. It's a Maybe Same. not just like we do. <laughs> <laughs> In their own way. Yes. Yeah. Nearly yeah. as much. Um, many of us have family members, uh, significant others, uh, friends, all watching right now with us. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think everyone has a different relationship with the ocean, um, yeah. every individual. But I can say that the people in my circle in my life definitely have a, a strong love and appreciation mm -hmm. for the Kaimwana. Mm. Yeah, like my my father, um, he uh, he loves the ocean and like he can't get enough of it. But he's actually a he's a land guy. He's a landscaper. But yeah, just like uh, Mahina said, like um, you know, everybody has their own connection to the ocean, their own way that they connect to it. So his way of connecting to it is uh, by va'a and by hitting uh, or surfing. Mm. And oh, nice. yeah, so there's so many different ways that we can um, show our love and appreciation, connect to the ocean, and may not all be the same way, but it's still a connection nonetheless. It's still a connection to our kupuna, and it's still a genuine, genuine love, genuine passion. Mm. Yeah, I love all of that. I think sometimes mm -hmm. our love for the ocean. Uh, you know, is masked by, as, as other things. But I think any time I've, I've seen any of my loved ones approach the ocean in, in a way that they can connect with and make sense to them, uh, whether it's through music or film or surfing activities, just watching it. Yeah, um, just hanging out with it us. Immediately reminds them of the love that they have for it. So I would, I would answer yes, um, yes to that question. But uh, I'm sure not everyone, there's some people out there I know afraid of the ocean that feel separated from it and and we hope that these experiences we're able to share kind of help bring the ocean to life um, for those people as well help yeah, them find I connection i can kind with of it. understand that fear too mm -hmm. it's it's very alien it's not hospitable to us as humans can we get a zoom on this uh, possible? Sure. there's there's a, a lot of oh, ocean second. there and that can be <laughs> that can set off some very uh, primal sorts of responses like for a fear sure. response for sure. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I think that's a very human reaction, and that's okay. My dad likes to say that fear is what keeps you alive in the ocean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely. 
Maximum respect. Sometimes fear can be tempered by learning too. That's that's how I got over stuff I was really scared of as a kid was learning and uh, yeah, sometimes that can help and you uh, and that fear can sometimes be converted into a healthy respect as well. You know, that's how I handle um, my feelings about using some of the uh, more dangerous reagents that we have to do and uh, that we have to work with in the lab in order to do, you know, my kind of science. Yeah, we just have to learn how to manage the that fear and the risk yeah. associated. And exactly, yeah. We're good to go. Hey, brother. All right, we got the next watch we coming in here. We got the amazing, the amazing 12 to 4 is here to party with you all. Yeah. We'll certainly miss you, but uh, we'll see you soon. Probably on the next dive, actually. Yeah. But uh, yeah. maybe time. It is lunchtime. <laughs> it is lunchtime. Yeah. Aloha. Hi, folks. Ahui ho. Ahui ho. Malama pono. Yeah, take care. Um, be out of the water about 8 tonight, so uh, we'll see you whenever we're next on watch. I just have a quick update. We're going to have Elsa. She's going to be leading and starting off this watch, this 12 to 4 watch. So just hang in tight while we shift over. Um, you'll be hearing some new voices shortly. Thank you so much for your patience. Seem to be headed downhill here. It's downhill. I get it. I can move the boat. Right it. I'm going to stay right on you for now, too. 20. Start out slow. Getting settled in back here, front row. 
Roger. Welcome to the afternoon watch. Is Kara doing a ship to shore? Yes. Catalina's doing one. Yeah, so Kara's going to be doing ship to shores and to, for half of our watch. Come um, around and uh, look to the uh, north, north, so east, she asked me north, north, to west. To just help out and sit in the comms chair, and I will not do as good a job as her, but I'll do my best. <laughs> you always do a good job. Thank yeah, you, Yeah, you do say. great. All right, I think we're good. I chatted with Val, and um, she just took a rock sample, so we're good there. They've done a Niskin, background Niskin. We're good there as well. I think we'll sample the biology opportunistically as we see any priorities for that and continue upslope to waypoint six. And uh, she again said, you know, we can find the best way up. It's not a, a priority to hit the waypoints exactly, um, but we can be near them and continue towards six and seven. Roger, thank you. Not on or we can't hear you. What is this again? I can't remember this. I think this is uh, solitary hydro. Yes. Yep. Rock Rock bell. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that would be a solitary hydro reserve. The or the stocked hydro reserve. What are these parts? Yeah, those are parts of the... Uh, the hydrozoa. Yeah. Oh. This the mound. And there's something on the pink is probably something else. Yeah, that's uh, that's probably a chitinor. Can we zoom in on the pink thing? You're right. The pink is... Yeah, that's a polychaete. That's a beautiful pink and yellow polychaete on the hydrozoan. So these are the Corymorpha, Corymorphidae, the hydrozoan. Um, and we have a beautiful uh, polychaete perched on it. Thank you. That's beautiful. I don't think we have seen a um uh, solitary hydrozoan uh, on our watches for any of the yeah, dives not any of our watches i'm no. not sure that wasn't in the handover but they could have seen it but i'm not sure yeah very nice this thank is you. great this is great okay. thank you no Yeah, welcome to the afternoon watch. I'll We've stick it in rest. the uh, DSC there if you want, Hans. Roger. We're, We're good. good. Moving up. Yes, please. They make it 50. And there are some chrysogorgias, uh, bamboo coral webs.
you do it again. Oh, okay. <laughs> Welcome to the afternoon watch. We feel rested from our late night, early morning middle watch, and we're back. And uh, we can do a round of introductions as we transit here. Elsa? Thanks, Hans. So, good afternoon, and Ali, everyone. My name is Elsa Tale, and I'm a supporting scientist here on the Nautilus. When I'm not on the Nautilus, I'm a researcher at the Palau International Coral Reef Center and I will be filling in for the comms position on this first half of the watch as Kara does some ship to shores which is a really important aspect of their work as science communication fellows so I'll do my best and with that I'll pass it on to did you introduce yourself already Hans? Well I've done it every watch, I might as well do this <laughs> one as well. My name is Hans, I'm a maritime archaeologist historian for NOAA's Office of National Marine Sanctuaries. I have the pleasure of assisting this watch as as watch lead, and I have the still camera and I push the button. <laughs> you do a great job, Hans. I push it's that a pivotal button. Number. Job. I know. Upashana? Yes, uh, I'm Upashana Ganguly from India. Uh, I'm a deep sea biologist studying the evolution of a group of deep sea corals, the sea pens, as a PhD student uh, at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. And I am one of the scientists in the team and a biologist for the watch. And with this, Taylor Ann. Hi, everyone. I'm Taylor Ann. I am the day logger on this watch. And I have been sailing with OET since 2019 when I started as an ocean science intern. Um, and now I'm a science manager. And so I'm really happy to be here and continue on going on these dives with y'all. So welcome. Mia? Thanks, Taylor Ann. Hi, I'm Mia. I'm serving as a navigator and seafloor mapper with Nautilus. This is my second time with Nautilus. I was on a couple dives ago on a transit mapping uh, cruise. Um, I was a geospatial analyst for about 15 years and made this uh, new career change. So, yes, you're never too old. <laughs> I'm Dan, sitting in the Herc chair. I'm Zach Gonzalez. Uh, I'm here taking Jake's spot for a second. Uh, he'll be right back, but uh, y'all have me for right now. Thanks, Zach. Welcome, Zach. Yeah, welcome, Zach. Welcome. Aloha, my name is Jaina. I am a video engineer on this watch and I am from Hilo, Hawaii. Happy to be here. Can't hear you at all, Jaina. Yeah, Jaina, you were very quiet. Oh, let me do that again, sorry. That's really interesting feature. Is that better? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Cool. Aloha, my name is Jaina. I am a video engineer on this watch and I am from Hilo, Hawaii. Thanks, Jana. Thanks, Jana. Okay, and welcome everybody, new viewers who are just joining us here on the 12 to 4 watch. We have viewers from all over the world, so um, United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Australia, Japan, Italy, Sweden, Russia, Puerto Rico just joined. Uh, New Zealand, Norway, and also American Samoa. Um, so quite a few countries from all over the world in different regions joining us here on Nautilus Live as we explore an unnamed seamount, which is roughly 60 nautical miles northwest of Kure Atoll. I don't want to, I will take some time to practice this Hawaiian name because the atoll does have a Hawaiian name. Let me know if you're going to zoom in on that, Zach. Zach's and I will to. come back with that later. Yes. <laughs> um, about half of the seamount was mapped in 2015 by research vessel Kilo Moana, and the remainder was mapped. I don't mind if you do, just let me know. If I, I glance over there and see it was mapped by here on uh, e by us here on EV Nautilus on September 17th, 2023. Um, so
So we are looking at the seamount uh, to collect geological samples and observations. And um, one of the questions that we have about the seamount is whether it's formed over the Hawaiian hotspot or is Cretaceous in origin. And we will, we have been blessed and allowed to um, take samples from this very sacred area, um, which we are now in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. And we're also in the realm of Po, which is considered a very sacred place for Native Hawaiians. So we're humbled and um, grateful for being allowed to be here. And we will keep that reminder with us as we continue with our watch. Again, seeing uh, those forked uh, glass sponges, which were, do you remember the genus name, Tilaran? I can look it up. I don't at the, the top of my head, but I think it, it's a roselid. Yeah. Um, I think because of the way it's opening from the back, or I can be mixing it up right now. Um, let me check. Let me check as well. Yes, I think it's a stock roselle. Yeah. And oh, Califacus. Califacus, Or yes. Califacus. Califacus. Oh. I almost called it a eupectelid, though. I'm so used to seeing those. Yeah, Califacus. The branched Califacus that we collected uh, during our last dive. Okay, so I have been coached that the Hawaiian name is Holaniku. Hu. Holaniku. First bunch? No, no, the uh, seamount. Oh, for the seamount. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry. Sorry, oh, Taylor Ann. <laughs> no, 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 you're good. <laughs> Holaniku. Holaniku. That's a beautiful procedure. It's hanging uh, upside down from the truck. Uh. Is there a meaning for that name? Um, unfortunately, I don't see it here, but I will make sure to ask. Uh, okay. We have quite a few uh, Native Hawaiian colleagues sailing on here on the Nautilus with us as we navigate through this space. Um, and their presence has been really a joy and um, an asset to us here on our voyage. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, wells of knowledge. Yeah, well, I think it's important because it's it's a step in the direction of merging indigenous knowledge and you know western scientific perspective that's mm -hmm. that's a step that we all need to take yeah and, agreed and in better collaboration and partnership yeah so that indigenous. has been a special oh. part of the voyage yeah come up just a few for me uh, indigenous so science is science yeah yep holaniko is the cure at all sorry not this not the seamount, sorry. Hawaiian it's the name for Cura Atoll is Holaniko. Oh, the, the Atoll. Okay, thank you. It's, it's in the right, dive so. plan, right? Yeah. So this seamount, as of now, is unnamed. unnamed. Um, and I'm not sure of the process of naming the seamounts, but hopefully it will get a Hawaiian name as well. Yeah, I believe there's also a working group for that. Yeah. Um, Okay, cool. And we are again looking at a branched Califacus uh, rosette sponge there, huh? with uh, hydroids growing on its stalk. And uh, there's something pink Got here. It. If we can have a quick zoom, probably an ophiroid. And there's also a small Person primoid there, up there on one of the branches. Ah, oh, yeah, off you right. Working on it. Why didn't it take that shot? Great. Thank you so much. Okay, go away. Thanks. Oh, uh, it has to be a slow click on that button. So kind of hold it down for... Right. Yeah, there you go. 
That's good. That's good. Doesn't have to be tilted that far. Um, yeah, good for 15. Sure. Yeah, Hello? just a little. I can. I glance at the. No. Uh. You can use the mouse there. Yeah. All the uh, save positions are there. But again, let me know if you're going to move it, because, yeah. There's a small crater called join between the crevices in Bay. Crevices in very angiologic term. There's a small. Okay, I don't need it 100%, but I glance at it every few seconds. So if anything changes, it, uh, I wind up looking there for two or three heartbeats longer than normal, and it uh, causes me to pause sometimes at the wrong time. And right at the center. In our view, the big sponge is one of those elephant ear sponges, the polyopogon species. Both of them look like polyopogon. I use it now to, when I'm coming in here, I can see how close I am to whatever we're looking at. I usually stick it right there in that view and then tilt down a little when we get the... Uh, This sponge kind of reminds me of SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> Could be the lack of sleep. <laughs> it does have a vaguely rectangular, <laughs> slightly yellow. The question is, what sponge? Oh, five, Baba, up, please. Yeah, what species uh, of sponge is SpongeBob? Was it Demo sponge oh, five, or a glass sponge? I don't know. That's a great question. Is this a Demo sponge? No, or? it's a glass sponge. Glass sponge. Probably a Demo sponge. It never showed like spiky spicules. Yeah, he never did any, have any spicules. Oh. Another one of the polyopogons with maybe crinoids, definitely some hydroids, and some squat lobsters, at least two that I can make out from this distance, and there's a small chrysogorgia on the rock beside it. Would you like a zoom? Oh, yeah, we can do a quick zoom. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Right there. Oh, there's at least four squat lobsters, which we often don't see squat lobsters on sponges. They're generally perched up on corals. Maybe the lack of bigger fans in this area Sorry, yeah. is making them... Iris challenge it. Yeah, and they are on within the hydroids, right? Yeah. Or the hydrozoan. Yeah, the hydroids. Mm -hmm. They don't commonly use. So a more common association for the squat lobsters is the corals, right? Yeah, some of the coral fans, absolutely. I'm not sure, would this be a novel association or just? No, we okay. have seen them, but it, it's, it's just not, not that as common. common. Yeah, you see them. That's great. It's a tiny little cup coral. Oh, yeah. I do see that one on the low. Oh, up, yes, up, yes, up, yes. yes. Up, hanging upside down. Great eye, Mia. So, um, for listeners who may be wondering, um, That's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Taylor Ann mentioned um, like a novel association or a new association. So when we are doing explorations, there are a couple of things that we're looking for that we consider like discoveries. So it would be if it's an entirely new organism that we've never seen before, but we would also consider um, new observations. If we see an organism we know exists, but it is at a depth or at, uh, at a geological range that it has not been seen before. And also if, um, it is 
associated or if it's um, feeding on, perched on, or interacting with another organism that we have not known it to interact with before. Um, and like they were talking about, this was a sort of a more uncommon one that we just saw. What's that? Uh, yeah, you can come down a bit. I need to slide this Watch back Watch your down. altitude notes. Come in. I'm off to the uh, left here. I'll come back. Or off to the right, sorry. Get those backwards. Yeah, you can come down a little. Give me some leash. Just a couple meters. So. Are these like a bunch of crinoids? Yeah, it looks like a lot. many crinoids on one of the Voltaria glass sponges. Yeah. Uh, and there's a percentage in the back. I wonder why the crinoids don't like the poliopogon sponges. Yeah. There has or, to be some. Yeah, it's just yeah. an observation that, yeah, they're all on that one small sponge yeah. in comparison to the larger mass sponge. Yeah. And also <coughs> we've been seeing um, most of the voltages that we have been seeing, at least since last night, they had a couple of crinoids on them, these uh, yellow ones. So I'm not sure if this is an association, obligatory association, or they're just using it here. Yeah. Must have got something to do with how the, uh, oh, nice cup coral, uh, how the crinoid feet, if I may call them, uh, need more surface area to perch on something, the okay, larger squared crisscross pattern of the vault area and the extensions mm -hmm. maybe provide that rather than the polyopogon which has a smoother and finer texture. Just a, That's a good hypothesis, hypothesis yeah. that I came up with. There's no uh, around, uh, studied uh, left for me a bit. To it as well look to your left a bit for me, up towards the hill there. And as watchers and listeners also know, we take periodically geologic samples right under you. in order for the geologist to understand the composition and age of these seamounts, these undersea volcanoes. You have 10 meters left. Yeah, we just passed uh, two other metallogorgias as well, so this is one of the smaller or younger metallogorgia colonies. And there was a bamboo coral whip as well. There's something beside it. So the one on the left is a metallogorgia, and the one on the right looks like a juvenile okay, metallogorgia. Ahead. Because we can still see that it, um, the branches and the polyps are along the length. That would be a juvenile metallogorgia as well by the chrysogorgia. It's, it has the uh, ophiroid with it, but as they mature, all, all the lower branches, they drop off and you end up having more branches at the top of the colony and that gives them that floral pattern or umbrella-like pattern. There's a, either a like Puni, even the pom pom and enemy. That's the pronunciation, right? Yes. Yes, the darker one. Lipanema. Push in there just a bit for us as I come down. Not, not you talking a video. Okay, hold that, thanks. Oh, that's beautiful. And there's a small shrimp as well. Right here, good for another 50. So this is a true anemone, unlike no, the jester's hat or the coralimorpharia. Okay, go in. 
Thank you so much. A jester's hat is not a true anemone? No. It's a Corallimorpharia. Whereas these are Actinavians. That's interesting because I, I would have thought the other way around because you could see a mouth on the other yeah. one, but you can't on this one? You can. It's just, just, it's just so hidden. many tentacles mm -hmm. that it's hiding under there. The tube anemones, the jester's hat, those are not. It's pretty flat here, Mia, so I, think I can. Uh, let me check with the tube anemones. Get back out in front easily without having to climb the wall. If it was steeper, I would have waited. Yeah, I, just, I was looking down here and wanted to make sure you're in a good position. Yeah. So the uh, human enemies, uh, justice had in enemies, even though we use the word in enemies with them, they are not true in enemies. They're all different groups, the Serianthaeria and the Corallimorpharia. And uh, the true in enemies are the Actinarians. Is that a sponge or a pumice rock? Like mm -hmm. Anna was teaching us. Rock. Yeah, so it might be a pumice rock. That was the term she used, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So pumice rock is basically uh, solidified ash from what Hannah told, uh, taught us. And they should be lighter and more floatier, but sometimes they get filled with water and sink and roll down to other places. This is what I've learned. Yeah, she mentioned once when they cut one open, water had fallen yeah. out of it, which yeah. is really interesting. It's very interesting. Oh, wow. That is interesting. I feel like we're always getting um, lessons from Hannah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and or Val. Of knowledge. I know, yeah. Thanks, Hannah. When they say some things, I try to remember them. Then, okay, what is it that they say? What does this mean? The best learning comes when we're doing puzzles together. <laughs> so here on Nautilus, one of our favorite pastimes is doing puzzles. And depending on how much free time everyone has, it can take anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> and how many people are working on it. Yes. Another one of those elephant ear sponges with a crinoid and a small uh, chrysogorgia on the rock. And we can also see the bamboo coral whips. Is that a dead sponge? Where the, on the this lower area, right corner? It looks like a dead sponge. I always think of xenophyophores when I see dead sponges, yeah. but that's quite large. That's quite large. There are several of these bamboo webs. We have about 30 meters left from the ship call. Roger, I, I don't need the uh, okay. ship updates, thanks. I can see from here and it's, uh, it's very benign. Struggling in the current though. No cliffs today and lots of current. Yeah, there's current coming up over the hill there. That's uh, I'll wait. It is great to have passionate geologists on board. However, we don't have a geologist on our watch. So uh, our watch team tends to focus more on biology, but yes. we do get instructions for sampling the geology for both Val and Hannah. And one of the things they're interested in with these ancient subsea volcanoes, these seamounts, is identifying if they can the location of the plumes 
in the mantle where they originated, whether these are from the same Hawaiian hotspot that gave birth to the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands and the Hawaiian Islands as we know them today, or whether they're from another hotspot or the, you know, the older Cretaceous period. <coughs> and they could do that by a combination of looking at their composition, the minerals and crystals that have formed inside the sea mounts and the isotopes that are left over from their formation. Yeah, it's really fascinating. And before this cruise, I had not had a chance to interact with ge geologists much. And I have to say of the two I've met so far, they're pretty cool and just really knowledgeable and also uh, really patient. And they always explain things when we're probably constantly asking them the same questions. Geologists rock. Yes, they do. <laughs> Thanks, Hans. Uh, not one smile on his face while he said it either. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a presented or an ophiroid perched on top of something? And there's also what looks like a couple of crinoids on a ferrate sponge to the right. No, it's a Voltaria. Crinoid on a Voltaria. Good for another 50, yeah. Thank you. Roger. Another one of the stromicosoma urchins. Another Voltaria with crinoids and squat lobsters. That urchin last night was moving very fast. Yeah. I've never seen them move that fast in the shallows, certainly. There's a bunch of things on this vault area. Uh, looks like some ophiroids, squat lobsters, crinoids. It's kind of bending under the weight of everything. You like a zoom? Yeah, probably if we can, a quick zoom would be great. Push in there, please. It's a darker thing that's there's something darker, right? Underneath. There's some shrimps. Oh, there's a hermit crab. There's a hermit crab and anime. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we said it together. Uh some shrimps, ophiroids, crinoids, uh squat lobsters, and there's something dark that can be one of the crinoid arms that's reflecting in the yeah, that looks like a crinoid arm. That's so great. It's, uh, can we z uh, zoom in a bit on the hermit crab if possible? Sure. Thank you. Go ahead. Little hermit crab is trying to gradually cry, climb onto the sponge. Aww. It will make it. We are scaring it. Too many eyes on <laughs> That's great. That's great. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. It's just so amazing that when you zoom in on organisms, how much you can see and how many of the different kinds you can see. So yeah, so on the sea mount, even though we are not seeing uh, as much abundance and density of benthic fauna as we had on some of the previous 
sea mounds, but we have been seeing quite a high diversity of organisms. There were many, for example, the stalked hydrozoan, the acorn worm that we saw last night, and there have been several others that we hadn't witnessed before on some of the other sea mounds, and generally also the diversity is quite high, even though the abundance and the density is not as high as uh, some of the other uh, sea mounts that we have been exploring as a part of this expedition. Yeah, it's been really interesting seeing a lot of new different yeah. animals that we haven't seen before. Some that I didn't know existed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so again, and I know we say this like on every sea mount, but it's like a different experience every time Absolutely. when we're diving on them. And you never, like, of the sea mounds and of the various depth ranges that we have been exploring, you can never say that, oh, this, this depth, from this depth to this depth, this is identical to the same portion in another mm. sea, another sea mound. another of the tromicosoma i think i'm going to say the name every time so that i can i get comfortable pronouncing it <laughs> so metallogorgias is another voltaria sponge with crinoids It's a nice uh, bamboo coral fan, uh, echnomyces probably, and we have a crinoid perched on it as well. There's a batipathies. Right. On something that looks like a batipathies in the center of the screen right now. Yeah, that is a batipathies. Black coral. Maybe with the squat lobster. I thought I saw a weaving arm. Or could have been just a branch of the black coral. I know, there it is. A small squat lobster on the batipathies and there's something tucked under the rock on the left as well. That's moving its tentacles. Probably a sea anemone. Can you bring your head you. to the left? Uh, look up the hill there. Another Tromicosoma urchin. Uh, I, d I don't know. So gorgeous, there's a small sea star, a goniasterid sea star. Uh, I think we passed a Coralidae.
Val mentioned that there were low oxygen levels here as well, so that could contribute to the abundance or lack thereof. Yeah. Well, it's come up in the last 40 minutes, though. I think it's 10.24% right now where we're at, but it had been, at a start of our watch, 9.84% O2 saturation. Oh, that, that's good. That's interesting. So Hans, for any viewers watching, um, Hans is reading from the measurements that Hercules is taking. So Hercules takes measurements on um, the temperature of the surrounding water, the salinity, and also the oxygen saturation, correct? And yep. then is there anything else on there? And this is taken at, it looks like five or 10 minutes intervals depending on the five five minute intervals five yeah. minutes five minutes yeah i'm not sure if that is similar to the grafana page but there is also a little bit more information on grafana and you can change the frequency of the updates um, to like down to one second um, is that yeah that's on this the science the short portal right what you're looking at there yeah And then after the dives, we're able to use those measurements from Hercules for our sound speed velocity profile when, right. we're, when we're mapping. Right. Do you want to expand on that a little bit, Mia? Or? Um, it's just the same as we talked about before with the, you know, we do XPTs. Can you uh, not um, force talk me if you're going to check out to the back row, please? Uh, yeah, so we talked about it previously. Um, Still, uh, uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, okay, try again. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry, we're just uh, no worries. Take doing your stuff time. down here. Um, yeah, so we talked about it previously. Uh, so we have the X we use XPTs to get uh, information on sound speed to have our are mapping more accurate because different variables like depth, depth and uh, temperature and salinity and all those things affect the, you know, all those parameters affect the model. So after we come up from a dive with Hercules, uh, ha we have a much more detailed um, sound speed profile, or we have more parameters that are much more detailed than what we do with the XPTs. And you can find information on that XPTs on the website. Um, so it's uh, it's way more accurate for our models as we're as we're mapping. Great, thanks, Mia, for that explanation. Yeah, I couldn't either. I had. Thank you for that. Though. I much appreciate it. Uh, I don't mind hearing the bridge call, so it's operational. I need to hear that.
Uh, uh, sure. Sorry, I had to think about that for a minute. Pretty cut, strong current there, so. Oh, Zynga. <laughs> Zynga. <laughs> I was muted. Yeah, Tony's good for here. Also passed a salp on the Atlanta view. Oh, is that what floated down? Yeah, the last yeah. and then the Brusenjid. The salp is a colonial organism, right? Yeah, those are chordates. So tunicata, some phylum tunicata, what was previously called the Eurocordata. So here on the Nautilus, uh, EV Nautilus, we actually do ROV dives with a two-body system. So we have Hercules um, uh, moving along the bottom there in, uh, with a lot more freedom, while Atalanta um, is attached by a tether above and then attached by another tether all the way up to the surface to the ship. So Atalanta acts as sort of a buffer between the ship's movement and Hercules, um, sort of absorbing the energy from the ship and uh, w the movement. So it's a lot more of a up and down bobbing movement, but you can also see a view from Atalanta if you are... If you are on our website or on the YouTube channel, you can watch the quad view and you can see the view from Atalanta. It is uh, sort of mostly a blue color, but you sometimes see organisms floating by a lot of things that are in the water column that our Hercules might not see while we're looking at the seafloor. And we actually also just accomplished um, three mar maritime archaeology dives using um, our system, Atalanta, and we were able to get some really awesome footage and uh, make some observations that we weren't able to before. And all of the highlights from those dives should be on our YouTube channel um, and have been posted recently if you guys want to check them out. So um, we explored the USS Yorktown. Um, the Imperial Japanese Navy vessels Akagi and Kaga, and um, we're able to do a really great archaeological assessment of those, thanks to our onboard archaeologists. And the operators. And the for operators. For the system yes. and Atalanta. Yes, it was a... a challenging dive. Yes, indeed. Because of the extreme depths, Atalanta was the vehicle. And Hercules had to stay on deck. Push in, on the, uh, push in there, please. Capacity is 4,000 meters, and Atalanta was diving down to 5,300 and 400 meters. Yeah. So I've been thinking about the explanatory model to okay. talk to you know um, students about that, okay. and I believe I've I've got something, but I'd have to run it by Dan. Yeah, that's a sea cucumber again, a cyanolactid, and this one's moving and feeding. Yeah. Oh. And we can see some trailing 
some trees in the foreground. I don't know if that's coming from the sponge or something on the sponge. Uh, but we have been seeing some Voltaria sponges with crinoids, Ophiroids. The one which is currently here has, in front has lots of associates on it. Something trailing there. Can we mucus okay. from the sponge? Unless it has, again, one of those, um, yeah, there are crinoids, ophiroids, nice. squat lobsters, some shrimps. So nice, creating nice microhabitats for all the organisms around. Yeah. Oh, there's a falling ophiroid. <laughs> <laughs> Is that recreational? He just jumped. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Sorry, Hans, we stopped you for from what oh, no, you were no, talking no. about. No, 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 that was fine. That was wonderful. Uh, great observation. But they just do that. Yeah. I mean, why not? Why not? Exactly, why not? Why not die from top of a sponge instead of just walking down? There's something small. Oh, it's a fish. Full of ophiroids, squat lobsters, crinoids of at least two different kinds. Probably has some hydroids growing on them as well. These glass sponges are quite occupied. Yes, yes. In this environment. Yeah, because I think that we aren't seeing a lot of other uh, habitat forming organisms. So these are called habitat forming because they create some structure and add structure to the seafloor. Uh, so that's why we are seeing probably higher numbers of associates. So on these. if something is on another species, it's an associate, or does this have to be more of a uh, mutual relationship? Yeah, so uh, the term associate can be used quite loosely. So in these cases, there, there's uh, the no such mutualistic advantage. Uh, it is more like several organisms use them as structures, habitat structures, to rise yeah, above the sea floor and get an advantage of catching food from the water uh, Somebody product. touched the button so here, the so the associate is, to, uh, like this Yeah, mobs, it's like a very general multi, term. That it can control several can things. Can be used like that. But I uh, notice that it was maybe other than some degree of protection, uh, Maybe they, they, give, they provide some protection and defense against the sponges, but there won't be a lot of predators. Uh, there won't be things predating upon the sponges so much. There's probably a fish on the sea floor. That's right. Explain why I've been light. struggling. Or something. No, I'm tweaking the whole thing a little. I'm more, um, I'm more applying thrust for one thruster versus the other. So usually when I'm twisting, I'm pushing forward. And then as I twist a little, it gives more thrust on one than the other, but they never reverse. Kind of like the verticals where you're always thrusting down. If they reverse, the ROV spins rapidly. Is this the candelabra shape that we've been talking about, or we saw yeah. previously on some yeah. other of so the sea mounts? Looks like a bamboo coral, probably. We have to zoom in a little bit. And I'm trying to find out what kind. Okay, video, push in there, please.
Is that a cup coral next yeah, to it? Yeah, there's a cup coral at the back. Could it be the 14 clade? Which one are you Care looking at? Um, nodal. Is it no, a nodal? Nodal. I went into nodal. I see some candelabra ones here, but yeah. they do look a little different. They look different. Those candelabra, they have been, I think, uh, classified into different, a new species yeah these genus. polyps are more dense on each yeah branch. yeah i'm having a hard time seeing the nodes yeah, yeah. could it be a primnoid or no, the polyps look very bamboo coral okay um can we uh, i do see the nodes can we see if it's a nodal branching or an internodal branching there right there uh yeah from any point wherever a branch is coming out if we can zoom in but uh, i'm not I sure given how thick uh, Falls in there. The that's very thick. Uh, I sit at the type. Okay. So, are there isodellas that are internodal and nodal, or are those only nodal bamboos? Okay, there have yeah. been a lot of. Okay, you can go in. Thanks. Let's see. I'll get in. There's Put also the on the here, huh? so get a shot on the way out. Thank you so much. Yeah, there are uh, isodellas. Are, I don't know if it's still a true isodellas or what has happened. Because there has been a lot of revisions get a very recently. So yeah, isodella type, it definitely looks like that. But the branching is... So it looks like there are okay. two main branches and the other ones are rising from them, right? That's Got how it. it looks to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it looks similar to this, but just more dense and shorter polyps. Right. Yeah, yeah good, kind good. of looks like mm. that, but more yeah, denser more polyps, yeah. right? And more uniform as well. Let's, um, let's look to the left a bit, come up the hill. That's interesting. If we see that uh, again, maybe I that Jacob's would be a good candidate it. for uh, collection. You look to the left, Jacob. Look at yeah, the, science uh, chat. Would that be a good candidate for collection? Or is that something we typically see? I don't think we have lots based on that. Probably going to be 315-ish. Give us a second. We have good imagery of it, right? Let me take out all the bamboo yeah. coral images sometimes sit down and do that. I've been saying that. So, um, uh, just wait, I'll come under you. You can come up five though. I'll come under you. We may have heard Taylor Ann um, referring to the science chat. So, one really great resource that we have here in the control van is we have a team of scientists ashore who are tuning in and following the live stream with us. And um, they have a diverse array of expertise that are, they are also to right. able to help us with IDs and also advise on whether um, organisms are good candidates for sampling. So candidates would include uh, either species on our priority list or um, species that are uncommon or exhibiting uh, just a behavior that we wanted to study. Yeah, it's a really great resource to be able to ask other experts because, yeah, we are in a very sacred place and that. Um, anything that we collect we are very grateful for, but we need to be respectful of, you know, sure. the, the life that lives here because it's been here possibly longer than we've even existed. So um, we want to respect um, our collections by, you know, only taking SNPs instead of whole organisms when possible and be pretty, um, yeah, sparse with our collections and make sure that they're actually needed. Right, and making sure that w we know as as best as possible, you know, what we need and and what the IDs are, and that's where that science chat really is, is helpful. Oh, 
little sea star. So DSC just. Oh yeah, a small goniaster on a uh, Voltaria sponge, perched up there. Very nice. Oh, another oh. <laughs> And there's a kind of recreational <laughs> jump. Diving. Skydiving. <laughs> it looks fun. <laughs> it would be fun for like five appendages and you could just parachute it down. Yeah, that could be a, a comic strip, honestly. Just yeah. <laughs> the life of an ophiroid. Come up, <coughs> come up as I come under your place. It's an observation that I've seen quite a bit with those brittle stars, and it's it never it stops being uh, fascinating and fascinating kind of funny. Fascinating and interesting. Yeah. Uh, never stops being funny. Yeah. <laughs> to the north here a bit. Oh, a sea cucumber. Oh, that's a bit of a different purple than. I think or is it the see, similar? Yeah, it's the front part. The head part is more purple, but the, but the body is mm, clearer. Okay. I think oh. it is like the others had more sediment in them, so they looked more um, mm. less translucent. Yeah, yeah. This one had. So that's the interesting thing too about the organisms that we're seeing. We're only seeing a snapshot of them and. Um, you know, like humans, organisms have many different um, things that they do. So they feed, they reproduce, they are juvenile, then they grow. So um, we may be seeing the same organism, but it is doing a different behavior. So uh, it's a new observation every time. We're making good progress. We're close to waypoint six. That's excellent, and as viewers can see, there's a lot of freedom with this two-body system and with Atalanta uh, above and three, one, five, no. Hercules on the bottom to be able to maneuver and look, investigate. Look, uh, bring your head to 315, please. This is more or less how the morphology looked, right? Yeah. And on the screen too, Hans, and maybe Mia can chime in. It looks like Waypoint 6 is on a little bit of a false summit or a, some sort of like a high point before we get to uh, the actual high point. Uh, or that's what it looks like on the screen. Yeah, so we're about 80 meters away and that point you're looking at is just 6, 70 meters wide and then we'll continue going up slope. Maybe we'll see some cool stuff there. Just a note, um, in the science chat, we have some interest for collecting what's known as a corallomorph. Um, but within our permitting, um, our rules are that we have to see at least 10 or more uh, organisms before we could take one. Um, but ca can't we just get a clipping of it? Yeah, so yeah, that's one thing that we need to clarify with the chat. Um, if we could, can we just collect part of the yeah. corallomorph? Um, yeah, that would be helpful information. I'm just not sure what, what is needed for their studies. Yeah. yeah, I have no idea. And how they are when being collected. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if that's possible. Here we're seeing some chrysogorges. And I think on the top of our collect to be collected list would be, uh, I'm not sure if you're going to see that I'm again. Bring ahead to the left uh, just the a bit more for me. Like yeah, the, the yellow one. Yes, we should. So that. Uh, uh, and yesterday we were yeah, seeing the pseudomonulus, so if we see one us. again, so that would be a good side. candidate for collection because um, last year they were put in a new family so and a new genus, uh, which has a couple of, uh, uh, two new genera in that family. One has just one polyp and the other pseudomonulus genus has, a, I think, three species. But now when I'm working on the same, I'm looking at that there's a little discrepancy in the position of some of them, 
So there's probably a lot unknown in that group right now, and we are discovering more. So that would be a good candidate for collection. We would just need a snip. We don't. If we can, then I'm depending on the size, a polyp. Or two polyps is enough, but they can be very thin colonies. It can be difficult mm -hmm. for snipping. Yeah, I was just going to ask, how would you snip a, yeah. a Balula? Would you just take a couple of the polyps? polyps? Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not sure, like, given the structure of them and the um, collection arm also depends. Were we supposed to take any samples at Waypoint 6? I know when we just got on our watch, they had just finished collecting a rock. Um, but if we've traveled at least a kilometer to get to waypoint six, potentially it would be a good idea if we see some. But I think for now we're OK. OK. Waypoint seven is less than 700 meters away, so. We can do it. And anything between 300 and 315 will get us there, whatever is good for you, right. Dan. On the deep wreck sites that we dove, we didn't have the two-body system. We just had the Atalanta at the end of the 6-8 cable. We've been thinking of a way to explain that Dan challenged our shoreside scientists with coming up with an example using angel hair spaghetti pasta. That was actually just my friend who's a mathematician. He wasn't a shoreside scientist. So I, I think... Push in there, please, when you... Judging from the 10 to 1 difference between the 6-8 cable and the angel hair pasta, if you took two school buses and laid them on their sides, that's interesting. What is that? I am not sure what that is. A type of an, an idea. An yeah, it looks like an idea for sure. Yeah. I shouldn't say for sure. But, uh, is it just flat there on the, the bottom? Or is there a stalk? I can't on the floor, right? Yeah, it looks like it from here. Uh, hmm. That's interesting. I'll have to look what that look up what that is. Thank you so much. Hmm. Can we one of those weird hydrozone? Yep. Or something. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's take a look at the guides here yeah what's asking the shore side if they have okay Go, no. that's a good spot yeah right there. um you can continue on we the same of them. same thing another move right there. a solitary scleractinian oh mm -hmm. okay And uh, further confirmation from Asako when we were talking about the Corallomorph interested in fur collection. Um, it's uh, similar to the solitary scleractinian that we just saw, which the skeleton is very key to the, the species, so it would be hard to just snip. So let's keep a tally to make sure we see enough of those organisms before we even you push decide there for to a collect second while I put so some cameras up here. And 
this is a bathy pathy black yes, coral. Yes, yeah, so bathy pathies and some chrysogorgias. So uh, Asako suggests as the little uh, night area on the seafloor that we saw that is um, a solitary scleractinian, right? Yes. And so they're basically like uh, the cup corals, but without the cup. And I'm trying to get a name for it. Uh, I think there's one in the Okay, go oh, I think hmm. I inadvertently touched something there, I don't know what I did. Just click on the screen here, it should go away. Oh, that's a very purple coral. Oh, the X, sorry. <laughs> Do you have uh, one of those Clark's white pieces over there? Come back to the north here. Uh, you should be able to look three one five. Roger, you can go anytime. <coughs> you need a hall pass, though. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, we're good for now.
sea cucumber. Looks like a. Um, no, no, it's a. a metallic orcha. Chrysogorgia. Oh, Chrysogorgia, yeah. sorry. The same family, though. Don't <laughs> worry, right? Did you hear me say Chrysogorgia? <laughs> yeah. I did. Hans <laughs> got it right, yeah. That's pretty good. I did. And uh, lots cup, of cup corals. Yeah, cup corals. The yellow one was a crinoid? Yeah. Very proud to see how much everyone is learning and remembering. <laughs> it's sometimes really hard to retain all the information from these guys, so y'all are doing wonderful. Nonetheless, these multidisciplinary multi missions on Nautilus are an incredible learning experience shared online and certainly for all of us scientists and crew on board the ship. There's many little cup corals all on these rocks. Bridge ROV 50300, please. Cheers. I'm trying to learn a couple of new words in, in Ukrainian every, every day. That's good. So what Saying have you learned? Saying hello to the cooks. So how do you say hello in Ukrainian? Privet. Come Pri again? Privet. Privet. Oh, that's is one way. Chakuyu is thank you. Chakuyu. Oh. It's always interesting. Different languages and. Yeah, Han, so here on the EV Nautilus, we have a dedicated crew, and they are from many different parts of the world, um, and they basically